Welcome back. This video is about green computing. When you hear the term green computing, the first thing you might think about is the sort of environmental impact computing can have. However, the topic is much broader than this. We can help ensure well-being by ensuring we are taking regular breaks, making sure we have appropriate lighting and good posture is maintained. All this falls within green computing. Taking the regular breaks is a, a way to help ensure well-being and take care of one's body. It allows a person to refresh themselves, perhaps with some fresh air or just to grab a cup of tea or coffee. Doing this will allow for better concentration when you return to the computer screen. Being accountable to someone else can also help in a person's success, but this is getting more into management than just computing. Ensuring appropriate lighting, as mentioned, is a way we can help ensure well-being while using the computer. The light should be bright enough so that the screen is easy to see, but not too bright as it could cause eye strain or headaches. The light source should not be directly behind the computer monitor, for example a window directly behind the monitor, and it shouldn't cause reflections off the computer screen. This is why uplighting is popular for computer use. It is important to ensure that you are not slouching or leaning forward when using the computer. If you do, it can lead to neck and back pain. Poor posture can also lead to headaches, eye strain and other health issues. Ensure that the top of the computer screen is at eye level. If you normally use a laptop, consider purchasing a stand to bring the screen up to eye level. They are relatively cheap and will help prevent pressure on the neck caused by looking down a laptop screen. When sitting, the chair height should be at a level that your feet can rest flat on the floor. Your thighs should be parallel to the floor. With your hands on the keyboard, your elbows should be at approximately 90 degrees. If you are struggling to reach the floor with your elbow at the correct angle, consider purchasing a footrest. These are also relatively inexpensive and can significantly improve your overall posture. Energy saving practices are important to follow. Computers and other devices use a lot of energy. One way to save on energy is to turn off your computer when you are not using it. The average person spends 4 hours a day on their computer, which can account for up to 30% of their total power usage. When left on, computers use standby power that wastes energy even when you are not around to use them. Computer monitors emit energy for their operation. You can lower your computer's power consumption by using the power management settings to eliminate unnecessary or inactive components such as the monitor and printers. If you want to keep your laptop active for a bit longer, you can adjust the automatic shutdown settings. This setting allows you to shut down the computer after a set amount of time or when the battery reaches a certain level. You can save battery life by putting your laptop into sleep or hibernation mode while you're not using it. Sleep mode allows your computer to restart the fastest. It works by keeping a little power to the memory while all other parts of the computer are turned off. This way it's very quick to return you back to the point before you, it enters sleep mode. Hibernation mode is similar, but this time the contents of the memory is stored on the hard drive and the whole computer is powered off. This way less power is used, but it will take a little longer for the computer to restart as it needs to copy the previous contents of the memory back from the hard drive. If you want to save power while you are using a laptop computer, consider lowering the brightness of the display. This can save a considerable amount of power. It can normally be done from a key combination on the laptop's keyboard. Let's take a look at how to adjust power settings in Windows 10. First, click the Start button in the bottom left of the screen, then select the cog icon. You'll find the power settings within the system section, so click on the first icon, System. Now on the left you should see Power and Sleep. You may see two drop down boxes or you may see four. This will depend on if your machine is a laptop or desktop computer. If you're using a laptop you can differentiate between 
when the computer is plugged into power or when it is running from the battery. Generally, you will want to set shorter times when using the battery to conserve as much power as possible. The top part of the screen allows us to set the time at which, if the computer hasn't been used in this time, the display will be switched off. It essentially puts the monitor into standby mode. The shorter the time you set, the more chance you have of saving power. However, if you are using your computer without giving any input, such as mouse movements or keyboard input, perhaps you are reading an article on a web page, it can be a little annoying to have the screen turn off while you are still reading. Try setting it to a time and live with it for a while. If it doesn't work for you, just come back here and make an adjustment and try living with a new setting for a while. You should find what works best for you with a little trial and error. On the right there is a link titled Additional Power Settings. If we open this, you can see there are two options to select from. The first, Balanced, which is the recommended and most likely the one selected. With Balanced selected, the computer will settle on a balance between energy saving and performance. Why do we have to balance between energy saving and performance? Well, the faster a computer runs, the more energy it consumes. A bit like a car, the faster you drive, the more fuel it will use. The other option is Power Saver. If you select this, you may find that your computer runs a little slower, but it will maximise the battery life, which can be useful if you aren't planning on being near a power outlet for an extended period of time. Just below this, there is an option for Show Additional Plans. If you click this, you will see a third option of high performance. This will give you the best performance for a computer, but it will use more power as a result. You may want to use this if you are playing a graphically intense game or using a piece of software that requires a lot of processing, such as video editing or CAD, which is short for computer aided design. Close this window to return to settings. In the bottom part of this section, you can set a sleep time. Putting your computer to sleep effectively puts the computer into standby mode, as mentioned earlier. It will still consume a very small amount of power as it maintains the contents of the memory, but it will wake up a lot faster from sleep mode than if it had been switched off fully and had to do what we call a cold boot. With sleep mode, it will remember what programs and files you had open, and even the windows will be arranged exactly as they were just before the computer enters sleep mode. Again, with a little adjusting, you should find a setting that works best for you. Remember also that you have the option of hibernate, which will take a little longer to restart from, but saves even more power by placing the contents of the memory onto the hard drive so that the machine can fully power down. From the menu on the left, select battery if you're using a laptop computer. From here, you can see the level of battery remaining. This information is also displayed in the system tray in the bottom right of the screen. If it isn't there, just click the up arrow on the left of this section. It doesn't show the percentage, but the little plug symbol on the left of the icon indicates that the laptop is plugged in and charging. From the settings page for the battery, I can set the power saver mode. This is a way to eke out the power for as long as possible. It turns off a number of things such as network connectivity. So in this mode, you won't have internet access and it lowers the brightness of the screen. You can see that I have the option to manually turn this mode on or I can set a percentage that when the battery reaches this value it will sw switch to battery saver mode. This is quite useful as it gives you time to save anything you have open before you run out of power. Once a piece of hardware has reached the end of its life it is important to recycle the material used to make it. Recycling is a process of recovering and reprocessing waste materials for the purpose of reducing the amount of material that is sent to landfills. Recycling can also reduce the, the demand for raw materials and energy from mining, oil, drilling and other processes. First and possibly easiest is recycling the paper you use when printing 
or making notes at the computer. Recycling paper saves trees that would have been cut down to make new paper. And talking of printing, recycling printer cartridges saves ink and plastic, those used in the cartridge's manufacture. Most recycling centres have a special bin or collection point for printer cartridges. Or often within the box that the new cartridge came in is a plastic return envelope so you can pop the empty cartridge in the post at no cost to you for recycling. Rather than buying a brand new cartridge, there is the option of using recycled cartridges. This may save money and reduce the amount of waste generated by printing. However, be careful when buying non-branded ink cartridges. That's cartridges made or recycled by a company other than the manufacturer of the printer they are for, as the quality can be a little hit and miss. The vast majority of portable tech contains batteries. Recycling batteries is a great way to help keep the environment clean, as there can be a lot of highly toxic material in the battery. Never throw devices containing batteries or batteries themselves out in the general waste, as they can become explosive, particularly if crushed. Microsoft Windows has a number of features built in that are aimed at making the computer easier to use, particularly for anybody with a disability. These tools are collectively known as accessibility options. Let's take a look at a few of the most popular options available. To access these tools, click the Start menu followed by a Settings call. Now, select Ease of Use. Screen readers are programs that can read text aloud to people who are blind or have low vision. These tools provide a window into the world for visually impaired individuals. You can use them to read text and navigate the computer screen. The window screen reader is called Narrator. At the top, we can turn it on and or off by clicking the first toggle switch. We can have narration start with the windows if we want to. There are lots of different voices to choose from, so you should be able to find one that suits you, particularly by the time you can use these sliders to adjust the pitch and speed of the voice. Most of the rest of the options are pretty straightforward and do as the description indicates. A screen magnifier is an application that enlarges the text and graphics on the computer screen. Screen magnifiers make text on a computer screen easier to see for people who are visually impaired or have low vision. Toggle it on and off with the first toggle switch on the page. Once it's open, you can see that it enlarges the part of the desktop where the mouse pointer is. There's a few other ways for it to work. If the settings bar isn't visible, click the magnifying glass. Then you can adjust the zoom level. The default is 200% and adjust the style of zoom. Lens allows you to see the whole desktop with just a portion magnified and docked gives you a zoomed area at the top of the screen. To close, either click back on the toggle switch or click the magnifying glass and then the cross in the top right to close the program. High contrast settings make it easier to read text on the screen by changing the brightness of certain colours in Windows. Select the style of high contrast you would like from the drop down box at the top. There are themes for light and dark settings. Once you have made your selection, click apply at the bottom. An on-screen keyboard is an alternative input device for people with limited mobility or disability. You may already be familiar with an on-screen keyboard if you use a smartphone or tablet computer. The Windows on-screen keyboard works in exactly the same way. To activate the on-screen keyboard, select keyboard on the left and then click the first toggle switch. If you want to type an uppercase letter or one of the symbols on the number row, click the shift key which will highlight it. Then click the letter or symbol that you want. The same process works if you want a control or alt key combination. Voice recognition software has been around for a while, but it is now being used more and more often. This is because the technology has improved so much that the speech recognition software can understand people with a variety of accents and different languages. 
You won't find any toggle switches within the ease of use menu as you can't control the functionality of Windows with your voice. But you can use voice in various applications such as writing a letter in Word. Once Word is open and you have a document open, on the right hand side of the home ribbon you will find Dictate. Click this to turn the dictation function on. You will see a pop-up window appear near the bottom of the window. Now just click the microphone icon to turn voice recognition on. There are a lot of command phrases you can use to move around the document or add punctuation, but these are beyond the scope of this video. In summary, in this lesson we have been looking at green computing. This includes not just the environmental impact of computers, but we also looked at the use of power settings to conserve power and the importance of recycling electronic gadgets once they've reached the end of their life. Also, within green computing, we looked at the importance of looking after the human that is using the computer, making sure the screen is at the correct height to help with con correct posture and the importance of taking regular breaks. We then looked at some of the various accessibility options within Windows to make using the computer easier, especially if you have some type of disability. This includes things like the narration tool, the magnification tool and speech recognition. Thank you for watching. This brings us to the end of this course. I wish you the best if you are in intending on taking the exam which matches this course. Please keep a watch for the next course in the ECDL and ICDL series. Thank you.